So when I was small, my school had this thing called reading time where we would read for about 30 minutes every like every Tuesday, Thursday morning, I want to say, I think. But every alternating day, uh, alternating day in the morning, we would have to read for about 30 minutes before school started. And one of the things that I didn't really agree with is one of the rules. And the rule was that you could not read books with pictures. So that means comics and graphic novels are off limits. You have to bring a book with like pure prose. So we'd have to bring a book with no pictures. So just words. And you know, while I like to, I, I support uh, promoting reading as in like full prose, I also support, you know, reading in any form. And I feel like considering graphic novels and comic books to just be barely reading or like not enough, not like book enough, or it's not considered a book to read. I feel like it is so inaccurate. I don't agree with it. I don't because some of the most interesting storylines and some of my most fondest memories of books are with graphic novels and comic books and i'm just not going to get into the semantics of like the difference between comic books and graphic novels but i will say that like they i love them so much and for the past month uh august was so stressful i just have to say i'm sorry August was so stressful for me. Uni was like really pressuring me and I got really stressed. So reading full prose books wasn't an option for me because I just got so stressed. I, I was still reading a lot. It's just that sometimes it felt like, oh my God, I cannot read. I cannot, I cannot read a full book right now. I seriously can't, can't. So I went to reading graphic novels and comic books and it just like reignited this certain love for it for me because i've always loved comic books i'm just i'm, I'm gonna show you like some of the comic books that i've read in my childhood and yeah i i love comic books so much because how could you say that it's not considered it's not considered reading because it it's so gorgeous i feel like just because it has pictures doesn't mean it doesn't have a story to be told so one of the one of the comics that i read in my like I don't want to say reading slump. I want to say my stressful time is Daredevil. I read this. This is the the Soul Daredevil. Uh, it was published in two thousand fifteen, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I I think so. I think this was published in two thousand fifteen. So I read this along with the other two. No, this is volume two. I read volume one online and then I uh, I read to volume three, but then I realized that I had to read the Mark Wade one, these ones. I had to read these as kind of like a pre prerequisite. And so I'm reading that now, the Mark Wade Daredevil of 2014, not the earlier ones, 2014 specifically. And oh, oh my God, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about the art in this one, but I absolutely love the Mark Wade one. It is so gorgeous. I'm gonna put out some some like screenshots on the screen. And I love comic books so much. And I'm just also gonna show you one of my favorite manga because I manga is also you know comics and graphic novels. And it is Land of the Lustrous. This is my favorite cover for Land of the Lustrous. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you who this is because I did it in a previous recording. I did, and I think that's considered spoilers. But this is one of my favorite. This is my favorite one actually, and the story is just so gorgeous, and the the art is also fantastic. It is so like it brings you in. I feel like draw the illustrations just add to the story. It tells the story much more than much more and. Yeah, <laughs> I think you can tell how much I love comics. Okay, I'm just going to show you some of the other comics that I read when I was younger and all. So one of the comics that I read were was Archie. 
Jughead and Archie and Betty and Veronica. So the, I read these because these are very accessible to me. Uh, the, co the convenience stores had them. So the convenience store selling magazines and all, they would have like these little issues of Jughead and Archie as well as Betty and Veronica. And I would just buy them from the convenience store. And then wherever I went, I felt like reading, but I couldn't like bring a full book to read. I would bring one of these comics and it was just, it's so fun. It's so fun. And I loved Archie so much that my parents compelled me to buy the 1000 page jamboree. And till this day, I still haven't finished this. I think I'm like a few hundred pages in, but I have never finished this. And I think one day I should finish it. But also, oh my god, <laughs> I, lo I really love comics, if you can't tell. But Archie is one of my favorite uh, comics to read because it, I feel like it's a connection for, for me and my parents. And you can see that I bought this even before Riverdale started like airing because it's this is the poster for Riverdale before it became like a show even. So it says here coming 2017. If the camera can focus, it won't focus, but it says coming 2017. So yeah. And some of the other comics that I read were local ones. So these are the ones published by a local publisher. They're huge. Gumpat Gumpa Stars. If I can just, yeah. So these are two different collections. So this is part of the World History Adventure Comics. Oh, dear goodness. <laughs> I think I haven't divulged this information to you guys uh, before, but I love his, like, shows and books relating to history and geography so the this this is the world history adventure comics so they would tell you about history of a certain country with their different historical time periods and they had different destinations and all and oh my god this is so up my alley and the, what i love about these comics is that they are educational as well so in between of chapters inside the book they would have little infographics. So they would have like a little page of information. They had they have pictures, they have information about the the things in the country. And I traveled the world with these comics, baby. I traveled the world. And it is it's so fun. Because it's educational, it's it's enticing, it's uh, it's fun and it's much easier to read when you're having fun, you know? Some people might, might not have fun with full prose, or they might find it difficult to focus on the text. And reading comic books is just as valid an option as anything else. Okay, I'm also going to show you the other collection from Gumbat Stars. And this, I'm, this is called the Prince series. So basically, there are a bunch of different princes, and every issue has a dedicated topic. So this issue is a, is dedicated to sportsmanship. I don't know if it's going to focus, but it says sportsmanship down here. And inside, it's also educational, by the way. So in between of chapters, they would have like these little infographics. So they tell you how the game goes. And then they have a little FAQ if you have any questions. And OK, this one is about history and culture. So I think, yeah, they also have like these little, ah, so this one section, it says the world's most famous museum. So they put here Lu the, the Louvre, they have the British Museum, they have Metropolitan Museum of Art. And it's just like, these are educational comics and they are amazing because they get, they get kids to read, they get people to read and to learn more while they're reading, which is like, so so good in my eyes and if you are a fan of existing like prose kind of books but like when you were younger the geronimo stilton graphic novels i got these and oh my god these are also related to history oh my god i was geeking out so bad when these came out because i love the geronimo stilton books i read Ger geronimo stilton i read thea stilton i went i read the Kripala books as well. And so when these graphic novels came out and they were about like historical time periods, 
<laughs> oh my god so this one yeah so this is what really compelled me to love history as like a topic in books uh, because at the back here it says you're saving the future by protecting the past <laughs> you can tell i'm really geeking out about this oh my god and okay one of the more kind of not i don't want to say bougie but one of the more like fancier type of comics that i had were tintin i don't think that's how you're supposed to say tintin okay focus camera focus i don't think that's how you're supposed to say tintin but i'm just gonna say tintin anyway for convenience this is one of my fancier copies of graphic novels and it's the tintin one this is volume three i only have volume three i don't have the other volumes because uh they're expensive and i already have some of the issues and so when i was younger uh my main goal was to get as many stories as i could regardless of whether they were in volumes or issues so this oh my god you guys this is gorgeous if you look inside the these are obviously smaller like illustrations in comparison to the bigger like ish issues these are just gorgeous they look so fun to read i feel like i am i am like oh, i feel like i'm reliving my my childhood it is so great it's so great and the pages feel so fancy to like flip through i feel like i'm holding a collector's edition when it's not it's not but it's just so near and dear to me these are some of the bigger like issues that i have i remember this one i really like like this one and these ones have way bigger illustrations than the small volume ones so you can see you, you can read all of it so tintin always put me in a like detective mood and i always love that about tintin and i also remember this one so big illustrations with with amazing dialogue it's just so fun comics are so fun oh and yeah i think that's all the comics that i'm showing you guys today yeah so uh also if you didn't know this is my manga shelf so i have haikyuu in here i have jujutsu kaisen i have tokyo ghoul and i also have attack on titan but specifically no regrets i'm not going to take it out because it's actually pretty hard to take it out right now but yeah conclusion i love graphic novels and comics i feel like they should be considered reading it shouldn't be considered as like barely reading or not reading because it has pictures because for me i feel like my relationship with comic books and graphic novels is so near and dear to my heart they have been so educational for me i've learned so much i've felt so much joy and if that's the way someone can read then let them read let them read it because some you know some people just don't want to read full prose books and that's fine because that's how they want to read they want to read graphic novels they want to read comics they want to read dialogue they want to see how it looks like and see and like see the visuals and i'm just really passionate about this because i absolutely love graphic novels and i feel like they are such a valid form of reading that i some people just don't understand and they don't respect that's that's the main point some of them really just don't respect comics and i feel like that is such i feel like you are wasting so many stories and opportunities by just not respecting the comic medium and yeah so for now i am reading the 2014 daredevil by mark wade and i am planning to pick up sandman uh one day and i'm also reading which had atelier by shirahama kamome i went to our panel actually uh recently yeah so this is all I had to say. I just wanted to tell you guys about my love for graphic novels because yeah, I love it so much. I think you can tell from like the entire the entire video and how I was talking about like graphic novels and comic books. And yeah, I hope you also find the form of books that you absolutely love because well, I love prose like full prose books. I do love them. I do. I do. I think comic books and graphic novels just always have like that small special place in my heart that I will like never be able to explain fully my love and affection for them. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs>